Hello there. Hearts are always a popular motif on quilts. Today we'll have fun with hearts on the tied heart quilt. And then we'll learn how to set off hearts with quilting on a little watercolor wall hanging. And we'll talk about one of the most important parts of the business of quilting, the relationship with the customer. And gadget girl Shelly Zacharias is here to share her tips for creating border designs. So stay tuned. Linda's Long Arm Quilting is aired free to you by Gamel Quilting Systems Vision 2. Innovation taken to the next level. My stitch, my vision, my Gamel. When you practice long arm quilting as a business, you'll find that the most important factor, just like with any business, is the customer. Your customers are trusting you with their hard work, their art, and their heirlooms. You want to be worthy of that trust, and part of that is establishing a good professional relationship right from the start. One of the most important things you can remember is never set yourself up as a judge of other people's quilts. Your role is not to criticize and never to pass judgment, but to assist. Your customers need to feel comfortable with you as the quilter. That being said, you will encounter problems with tops brought in to be quilted, and you need to discuss these problems with your customers openly and frankly. The key phrase to use here is, as you can see, followed by an explanation of the problem. Then you can work together to find the best solution and what are possible solutions? You can explain how to correct the problem and the customer can take the quilt top home to fix it. You might be able to fix the problem as an additional service for a fee. Or you might recommend someone who can correct the problem. Working with your clients professionally and understandingly to help them make the most best possible quilts is a good way to build a strong customer relationship. This will mean repeat business, an enhanced professional reputation, and happy customers. Hearts are a great motif to put on quilts, and most of your customers will love them. This quilt lended itself very well to hearts. It has a very soft, uh, light pink area, and I wanted that to really show up. So I decided to use, again, the workstation and use the heart template this time. I'm going to make the biggest heart first. And I'll go down and bring up my thread. Just pull it back to me. I'm not going to stay leaned over there. I'll hold on to both threads as I start. And then I'll just follow the heart shape in this template all the way around like this. And just go past about maybe an inch there where I started. Turn the machine off. Just raise the stylus. Put it in the next size heart and go around it. There we go. And I'm using my regulated stitch. So I have perfect stitching. Here's the third one. This is really fun. Now, for time's sake, I'm going to just skip in here to the to the last two, but you can see exactly what I have done. I just, just continue to do these hearts, just one right after the other. So there's the second to the smallest, and then I'll do the very smallest heart because I want to be able to do some freehand in there. There we go, and I love that area that I've left in there. That would be really good for freehand too. Now I'll take my stylus out, and I'm going to go to the front of the machine And we'll do some freehand. The first thing I'll do is go down and bring up my thread. And there's my bobbin thread. I'll cut all these extra little threads off, get them out of the way. Now, as you can see, on this one, I've done feathers all the way around. And they're all freehand feathers. So I'm going to start in the center. And I have one large teardrop shape. So I'll start here and just come out here with a nice teardrop shape like this. And then I have two little curls. So I'll curl under and come up and curl under and come up like that. And then I'll start my feathers like this. 
And these are round and follow the heart shape, round and follow. Some of them are smaller, and some of them are going to reach out into these areas where I need to fill up. So they'll have a little bit different shape. They're almost, again, like teardrops. Let's get rid of that thread so that won't be in our way. Like this. And this bottom one is just going to, like that, round, fill up the space and back, round and back, round and back. And again, reach out into the space that I have. This is an odd shape, so it's kind of fun to fill in that entire area with your feathers. And here's some little ones. A little big one here. There we go. Now, around the little heart, I did the same thing inside of here, just filling in with these little feathers. Dripping down there in the middle and back with this hot pink. Actually, this is a neon pink thread. I love it. And the neon colors are not as bright when you get them actually on your project. And then in the middle, I just did a little bit of stipple. And um, remember your rules with stipple. Uh, everything is curved. No points and don't cross lines. But remember that the stipple police will not get you if that occurs. You just keep practicing and keep working on it. But it isn't perfect. And you know, your stipple is like your signature. Everybody's stipple is different. So don't think that yours has to look like everybody else's, because it won't. And then I just wanted to make that middle heart stand out a little bit more. So. Um, I did just this little bit of thread painting, just going over it maybe five times, just so it could really stand out from the rest. So that's how I did that heart, and I, and I think that turned out very nice. Um, now in the other areas, I used a heart template, just an acrylic heart template. And I don't know if you can see it very well here, but I, but I did one one way and one the other. So I'm just going to put this in the middle like this. And I'll start right here, bring up my thread. Get it started there. And I'm going to apply pressure on this heart. I have an extended base on the machine. Come down to the point, and then I'm going to switch hands. I really have to hold that heart still. Keep my fingers where the, where the heart is, and then I will turn it exactly opposite. Turn it upside down, around like this, into the point. Again, switch hands, coming around like this, up and back down. So that was my heart uh, template. Now you could go over those several times, and on this one I think I went over that about five times really to make those show up. And that makes kind of a different design. You have to really look at it to see that it's a heart design. Now in this area, again, I could see that there's four hearts coming in. It could also form a floral design. But I decided to go ahead and use my heart shape there. So we'll go down again and we'll go around our heart template. And this time I will indeed go around it um, maybe three times. And even with this uh, neon thread, this, it, it's hard to see and show up in this busy area. So I could probably remove the template and just go around it now that I have the shape there. Just go around that about three times, like that. And I did that in each of the in each of these little heart areas. And then in between the heart areas, I did a pattern meandering, just back and forth like this. And what that did is it pounded down this area around the hearts because I really wanted those hearts to stand out. And in order to do that, 
I had to do some heavier quilting around the hearts and that's what popped those hearts right out of the quilt. So when you look at that, you can see that. And you could do it even heavier than I'm doing it here. You could do it really heavy so it almost looked like a, a thread painting. And then in the area around that, I decided to soften that whole look by doing some echoing. And I wanted again to keep it in that heart shape. So I just kind of came down point, 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 point like this, right out to the edge, and then follow your seam over like that, and then keeping it again in that heart shape like this. And so that echoing is real easy to do. And you can see how quickly you could complete a quilt like this, and your customers would love it. Or you would love it. Because I know many of you are doing this as, as purely a hobby, and it's so fun. So maybe I've shown you some ideas there with hearts. Now, I have another little heart, a watercolor heart, and I want to show you what I did on that one. So I'll change quilts real quickly so that I can show you that one, too. We have a cute little watercolor quilt, and as you can see, uh, the colors are, are kind of running together, but I can see the outline of where the heart should be. So I'm going to show you how you can bring that out with your quilting machine. We're going to start right here, and I'll first just outline the heart. Now I'm using a heavier thread. This is a jean stitch, which is about a 90 tech, so it's two, two and a half times as thick as your regular thread would be. So I'm going to, um, let me see, let me go into manual here. And we'll go pretty fast. First, just going to outline the heart like this. Stop right down here. Let's cut that off. And you'll hear that you can hear it hitting a lot of the seams because it's really um, going through a lot of seams here with this heavier thread. And around like this. And then I'm going to make a teardrop in the middle. You should be able to see this on the um, on this lighter fabric. And just kind of drip some feathers down here like this. And then as I get closer to the side, I'll follow the side a little bit more closely. Round and follow, round and follow. And then I'm getting smaller hearts as I get down to the middle. Follow the bottom of the heart down and then reverse with the hearts. They're still a little smaller than normal. And then they get larger as I come back up like this. And I also have a larger needle. The size of the needle that I'm using is a, um, an MR5 needle or a size 21. And then because I don't want this all poofy in here, I'm going to come in here and put some little ribbons like that. And now I'm going to make the feathers on the outside. I'm going to do a little heart at the top. And then just start bringing my feathers out like this, round and back, round and back. Practice this on paper and get your, get your uh, feathered heart down. You'll be able to do it. You don't have to mark it first. Just have a little bit of confidence in yourself. Round and back. And just kind of drip these down here that are at the, at the bottom. Round like that. And back. Like this, filling out again all of this space, reaching out into the corners. And we could put curls out there. Then I will come back, probably change to a lighter color thread, and stipple in all of the areas where I don't have the feathers. Reaching out again, up here, and over, and back. Now I have really made that into a cute little heart um, shape and defined the area that I was trying to see. It's much, much easier to see. And then with stipple in all those areas, we'll really just puff that right out. So have a lot of fun with your watercolor hearts. Next time on Linda's Long Arm Quilting, we're going from hearts to stars. See how we use the piecework as a guide to quilt freehand around these stars with this fun project. 
Laura Heine joins us and she has some great tips to share. And we'll talk about how computers can help you streamline your quilting business. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it. See you next time. I've been teaching more than 20 years, and I believe that my left-handed students have had to conform to the right-handed world when it comes to long-arm quilting. Stop! Not anymore! Now with the new Gamel Vision 2, left-handed quilters can easily customize the quilting machine to their own comfort and needs. My stitch, my vision, my gamble.